Hello everyone, Vulcan here, and as you can see, this video is going to be completely different from the norm. Normally what I do is make a review video or a theory video regarding a series that I'm watching, most often Ruby of course. One thing that I feel that I haven't really done enough of is to actually be involved with you guys more as a community. So this video I'm going to be addressing a lot of the comments that I found particularly interesting over my past videos, uh, mainly with my character tears video that I put out a couple of days ago. and. Also, because this is the first time that I'm doing this, I'm going to be addressing a few comments from my shipping videos because those were actually very well received to my greatest surprise. After that as well, what I want to do is make a particular announcement. This isn't going to have anything to do with my channel in particular, but it's something that I saw a lot of people being concerned about in a Facebook group that I'm in. It's something that I really feel particularly strong about. So without further ado, let's get this going. So the first comment I want to address is made by Nate123456 in my character tiers video. Now that's an interesting choice of numbers and I hope I'm pronouncing the first part of a username correctly. He says, my only problem with placing Ruby in tiers like this is I can't help but feel like she should be completely OP to most people. Her speed and having a sniper should just mean she could run away, shoot, run away, shoot. There's not a single character that should be able to catch her. Maybe Raven's portal thing, but that's it. And I'm not sure how good Cinder's flying would be in an actual open area. <laughs> There's a few things I gotta say about that. Actually, three points that I can think of. The first one being that we do have an example of Ruby being tagged, and that was with Mercury back in Volume 3. When Ruby tried to get past Mercury in order to go and save Penny, Mercury used a kick in order to stop her from getting past him. So there we have an example of Ruby being tagged, despite one not having a speed-based semblance and the other having a speed-based semblance. At least we thought it was a speed-based semblance up until that point. Which brings you to the, my next, next point, actually. That is what her semblance is. We don't know exactly what it is now because ever since Volume 4, that's been up for debate. In the character trailer, we do see Ruby using something or doing something that was totally different from what you'd expect someone with a simple speed base summoners to do and that was turning into separate bundles of rose petals kind of like what that guy from infamous second son does by turning into three separate embers now someone in the comment section would probably say what his name is but i can't remember what it is so let me know later in the volume in volume four we do hear crow saying that her semblance is turning into rose petals or something along those lines we don't really know what her semblance is anymore or whether or not her turning into rose petals actually does make her faster. And if it does, it's probably not to a significant extent. Because we, like I said before, we do have an example of someone tagging her despite not having a speed-based semblance. Of course, that could probably be due to the fact that Mercury is that much superior to her. But at the same time, you have to consider that despite the fact that he doesn't have a speed-based semblance, the fact that he is more skilled, as I say in the character tiers video, he was able to tag her. Of course, you could argue that it there was only one direction that she could go, but at the same time, that would still give her a significant advantage when trying to get away from him. And also, the final point I want to make is that we have seen other characters display a similar level of speed or even the same amount of speed as Ruby, and that was Crow and Winter when they fought each other in Volume 3. Now, again, I did say that Winter is basically in the same tier as the likes of... Uh, Neo and Adam, so you could again chalk that up to greater proficiency as a fighter or greater greater experience. Though you could also consider the fact that Winter's semblance, her glyphs, could also make her faster because we did see examples in Volume 2 with Weiss using her semblance to make herself go faster or even alter time, alter her time or something like that in order to make herself go faster. She does that to Blake as well in Volume 2. Other characters will at least have ways to deal with that kind of speed or be able to emulate that kind of speed. So there's no real telling whether or not Ruby's speed makes her OP in any way. So the next comment I want to address is from Jfeather767 in my character tiers video. Now this comment is very long as you can see, so I'm just going to summarize his main points. Now he talks about Emerald, Mercury, Roman, and Neo in his comment. And what he says is basically that Emerald is the weakest of the four uh, mainly because she doesn't rely on her CQC as much and mostly relies on her semblance in order to gain the upper hand. And I could also presume that because her semblance is very limited in its use, she cannot use it as freely as, for example, Neo, which he brings up later in his comment. Above her would be Roman, uh, who has great technical and defensive skills as showcased by the fact that he was able to deal with multiple dual-wielding opponents pretty much at the same time. 
Mercury, a similar story. Uh, he would rank them both a little higher because we haven't seen their semblances. And then we have Neo, who displayed as much, if not better, skill in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat than either of them. She's very nimble and she has greater control over her semblance compared to Emerald. And that's the point in particular that I want to address about this comment because I... Other than that, I completely agree. He is 100% correct. But it's that particular aspect of Neo having greater control that I want to address. I want to talk about this a little further in my future video uh, where I'm going to pair up Emerald and Mercury against Neo because that's going to be relevant for that video. But one thing I want to point out very briefly is I wouldn't say Neo has greater control as much as I would say it's the difference in the nature of their semblances. It's something I also mentioned in that past video where I talk about Emerald's semblance specifically. And basically, there is a huge difference in the way their semblances are executed. Whereas Emerald attacks the, her target's senses directly, what Neo does is basically something like refracting light or changes the light around her in order to make it look like something is there when it actually isn't. So basically you could say that Emerald's semblance is illusion, whereas Neo's semblance is mirage. So because of that, Neo is able to affect more than one person at a time because she doesn't attack a person's senses directly. So, And I would assume that doing that, as Emerald does, takes a lot more effort. And that's why Emerald's use is a lot more limited, but at the same time, the effect that it ha that Emerald Semblance has on a person is a lot more powerful and can't be broken as easily. So next comment I want to address is from Splice Knight from my Black Sun vs. Bumblebee video. He says, to be honest, I feel like Black Sun is more likely to happen and I'm okay with that since Sun isn't afraid to be frank with her, whereas Yang has a habit of holding a lot of her own weight on development and more than likely will focus on her own path rather than some relationship with someone who, let's not forget, has burned her multiple times. Pun intended. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty funny because I didn't read it all the way to the end, but now I see it. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty funny. So extra points to you. I'm glad I'm actually including you in this video. So what I want to say about that is I guess he do have a bit of a point, but I do want to mention that you can't really say that Yang hasn't been frank with Blake because especially during that heart to heart scene in the classroom when Yang was telling Blake to slow down and, and go to the dance. Yang was very upfront about her past, about a story that supposedly she hasn't told anyone, even her own sister, Ruby, because I guess she might have told Ruby, but we don't know that for certain. So I assume that Blake is the only person to know and that's what it took to get Blake to actually listen to her to slow down because what Blake needed was a, someone to relate to, someone with a similar story. Yang had exactly that and, and she brought that forward. She was very frank and she was very open. I can't really say that Yang isn't as frank as Sun. On top of that, Sun really hasn't been too frank, at least up to volume three. In volume four, he was very frank with her instead. He was really trying to get Blake to listen to him and he succeeded in the end, of course. But that's exactly why I think those two characters are just as likely to end up with Blake as each other. So again, I, I haven't changed my mind on that. I do think that the two are just as likely to happen. Volume five perhaps might give us some more information. Um, <clears throat> I know a friend of mine who says that it'll either make it or break it, regardless of what ship you go after. So we'll see. I'm really excited to see what happens there. And final comment I want to address because I feel like we're running short on time is again from Nate123456, this time though on my Lancaster versus White Rose video. He says, I don't really like either. And by that, I mean, I don't particularly like Ruby with either of them. Weiss has never shown romantic feelings for Ruby or girls in general. And Jean and Ruby are both at least kind of hung up on Pira. They're both good friendships, but I don't know about romantic. I mean, I don't think Ruby has shown any sort of interest in anyone. Plus she's both young and busy. Now, those are some really good points actually. One of the one thing that I do want to clarify in particular about my shipping videos was that I just want to showcase what I think is more likely to happen, not what I think will happen. Now, I so I would support White Rose over Lancaster for the reasons I stated in the video, but at the same time, it's not my main concern. Because I do realize and I agree with you that they neither Ruby nor Weiss have shown any romantic interest toward each other. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It doesn't like I wouldn't be bothered about it. It's just 
my view on what I think was more likely to happen based on the fact that Ruby is closer to Weiss than she is to Jean. And when it really comes down to it, that's the point of my video. And the last thing I'm going to talk about moving on from the comments, and again, nothing to do specifically with my channel, but something that came up uh, recently in a Facebook group that I'm in, and I'm sure many other places that I'm not aware of, is the fact that regular members now have to wait for a full week after the initial release for first members before watching any Rooster Teeth content on the website. So if you're a regular member, Member, you have to wait a week after the initial release, just like people who watch Rooster Teeth content on YouTube, basically non-members. Now, I get why Rooster Teeth is trying to do that. They're trying to incentivize people to get a first membership. And I still say that if you can afford a first membership, then do get it because it's really cheap. Having said that, I do know that there are people who can't afford a first membership for various reasons, either because they're very poor or because they're uh, they have other expenses or they have other priorities. So I do understand where they're coming from. What I don't agree with is the fact that regular members have to wait for a full week instead of just a day, not because of the incentivization. That's per the Rooster Teeth is perfectly right in doing that. But the problem with that is there was benefit for regular members. They could only see it a day after instead of a week later. Basically, if you're a non-member on YouTube, and you join on Rooster Teeth website and now you get, rather than having to wait a full week, now you, you only have to wait a day, you would be exposed to all the benefits that first members, first members would get. Namely, getting to see it on the day of release, getting to see an episode of Ruby or an episode of Red vs. Blue on the day of release, on top of the fact that there are a lot more exclusive content that you could watch in case you're interested in that. I'm not, but I do want to see this stuff as soon as it comes out rather than have to wait for a day or now in this instance, a whole week. In that respect, there is no benefit anymore to joining the Rooster Teeth website, although joining the Rooster Teeth website would still make you aware of the first member benefits. At the same time, you're not fully encouraged to get it because now you're not benefiting from actually getting a regular membership because you're basically the same as a non-member. That's basically a slap in the face for regular members now because they're no longer being encouraged to get a first membership by being encouraged to be a regular member over being a non-member who has to watch the stuff on YouTube, if that makes any sense. I do hope that they change that again in the near future. I don't think that it was really Rooster Teeth that did it, but rather their um, parent company, um, Someone will remind me what that what the name of that parent company is because right now I'm, ha I'm drawing a blank. Those are my views on that particular topic. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. And also what let me know what you think about my comment responses in the comment section. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe to my channel to see more of this. I hope to be able to do this on a weekly basis. I did a few more videos this time than just the video that I did within that particular week because obviously this is the first time that I'm doing this. So... Hopefully you enjoyed my ugly mug for the past 15 or 20 minutes. I don't know how long this video is. I will know after I edit it, so we'll see about that. So once again, like this video if you did, subscribe to see more, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.